welcome to Adobe Live, everybody. I'm going to be your host, Anna Davis Court, and this is our lovely guest, Jonah Lope. Wait, over here. Woo! Hi. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Anna. And hello, everyone. Oh, How hello. are you? Everybody in the chat is already saying hello. We've got Cody Bear. Thank you, Cody, for being here. And hey, Fairy, Cody. Matt H, Andreas, tell me where you're coming from, everybody in the chat. We love to see you, and we love to know that we have like a global audience. So please let us know in the chat how you're doing on this lovely Monday morning. Uh, and then we are going to go through uh, and talk about what is going on today. So we got started this morning at 7.30 with Spencer Nugent. Thank you so much, Spencer. Uh, at 9 a.m. we had the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge just before this. And then of course, we've got our character design with Jonah, woohoo. Uh, at 11.30, we've got the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. Then after that, we've got video editing, the XD Daily Creative Challenge, and ending the day with Doodle Therapy with Allison and Sid Weiler, woo! So excited for all of that. Oh my gosh, there's so much going on as always here on Adobe Live. Uh, and thank you guys once again for being here. Uh, Matt H is saying South Florida coming from there. Oh yeah. Michelle says good evening from the Netherlands. Oh, so cool. Love to see that. Uh, and we're here with Jonah Loeb today once again. So Jonah, hey, how you Hello. doing? I'm, I'm really good, Anna. How are you? I'm just, you know, I got tea in my belly, so I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Monday! <laughs> uh, but who are you? What do you do? What do you like? All the things. I'll tell you all the things. Um, well, first <laughs> of all, um, my name is Jonah Loeb, and I'm really happy to be here. Um, yeah, I am a uh, game designer. I'm an illustrator. I'm a fantasy art educator. Uh, and I'm a writer. Um, I do lots of different kinds of art things. So um, I was uh, uh, traditionally, I kind of made my way up through the gaming world in a place called Bethesda Softworks, where I made 3D models of creatures, dragons, giants, mummies, super mutants from games like Fallout 3, Fallout 4, and Skyrim. And then in subsequent years, but I left about eight years ago, I've been doing a lot of streaming. I've been working here with Adobe. Um, I do um, my own streaming um, over on um, other websites as well. Um, and I've been focusing a lot more on freelance. And so while I used to do like 3D work, these days I'm much more pivoting towards 2D work. Um, and a lot of that comes down to like, I, I kind of, I'm always looking for a challenge. I'm always looking for the ways in which um, one field of art can kind of complement another field of art. Um, and I love learning one field and then, and then feeling those wins and those gains kind of in other realms of um, art. And so I try to do my best to kind of convey and pass on what I've learned from these various journeys uh, over on my um, social media, on my YouTube and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. And um, today I will be doing some kind of uh, um, fantasy art illustration, character art illustration for a character um, that I have recently come up with in recent months. And it's a little bit more cartoony. It's a little more out of my wheelhouse. And that to me is like a huge win and it's something very exciting. Right. So that's why I'm here today. Variety. And I've got, you've got your tea. I've got my coffee. <laughs> uh, I'm ready to go. It's raining outside. Um, my pants are wet. Same. <laughs> I, I, I deeply debated whether or not I was even, I, I got here to the, my studio and I was like, do I take my pants off? Or do I work? We wouldn't and know. <laughs> I know you, would, you wouldn't know the difference. I will tell you that Actually, out of respect for her audience, I have kept the pants on today. Okay, so, pants on, yeah. but wet, unfortunately. So sorry. <laughs> That's what it is. It's a rainy it's always uncomfortable. Day. Uh, yeah, over here in uh, Oregon, also very rainy. So I feel you. How, how unlike Oregon? <laughs> what? <laughs> how dare? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, I for one have loved quiet's journey i've been following this on instagram if you guys haven't seen this definitely go follow jonah on instagram and see all of this amazing work with this quiet character and everything else <laughs> thank you thank you very much yeah i've been having a good time with it and for anybody who's not kind of certain exactly what anna's talking about i've been doing trying this this technique where i basically um record making the piece of art and this is traditional art and i can show you the ones that i've made so far um, and then I record the process of making that and then I tell the story as we go. And so uh, each mm -hmm. Instagram post is about like a minute long. We go through the quick chapter of what happened that time, uh, play some nice music, you see the piece come together and then it's done. And then I basically have 12 chapters all together that are coming out one by one and ultimately they'll be in a YouTube format. So, but um, yeah, but Quiet has been this little character that uh, you'll see here, a little skeleton chibi character mm -hmm. that kind of just came along in the last couple months. And I think 
I think came along because I had a kid like a, a little while ago and, and, right. and quiet's like a little like kind of like big bellied you know big headed little little character that I don't think I would have necessarily come up with um if I hadn't had like a little rug rat so absolutely is this uh, your first child it is yes so exciting oh my gosh yeah. well congratulations thank you very uh, much. and i come from the world of children's illustration uh children's book oh. illustration so uh i definitely have heard that a lot where it's like a kid changes your life but also inspiration <laughs> is totally different like oh suddenly you're seeing life from a different perspective. I love your, 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 I feel like I have so much to learn, by the way, from your illustrations as, as somebody, I come from a darker, more fantasy Same. kind of like realistic background and just like scrolling right. your portfolio here on Behance is, and then following you on social media, et cetera, super fun. Because again, like I said, like all the principles know. of art remain <laughs> the same, you know, from one medium to another and one genre to another. Right. Yeah. And just like what you do with um, expression, what you do with like line work, and then what you do with like texture and and color, mm -hmm. is like so cool. And I'm I'm I feel like with especially in the realms of texture and color, I just feel like I'm so far behind you, and I have so much to learn. So. Oh my gosh, Jonah! No, stop. You're <laughs> same to you. I feel like it's all you know. It's the spectrum of art. We both know. Like there's Definitely. always more to learn. Always. Uh, but I feel like we're kind of in the same wheelhouse where, I mean, obviously you have way bigger accreditations and like I've worked on a lot more stuff professionally, but like a, a couple games is all that's all. Uh, oh, you know, just a few. I got, I got a job at a place <laughs> once and, and that's, yeah. Yeah. That's the story of everyone. Right. I got a job at a place once. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I definitely appreciate the cross genre ing because I'm so into that. Uh, I don't think that anybody needs to necessarily box themselves in and say like, this is all I do. Uh, and I, everybody in the chat, I'm talking to you too. Like you don't yes. always have to, I mean, marketability, yes, is having a consistent portfolio, but that doesn't mean that you have to stick with one portfolio. You can have multiple, you can keep making work for whatever you love. That's the most important thing to get is like yeah. jobs that you love. <laughs> yeah. Well said. Well said. I also just feel like life is long, hopefully. And, um, <laughs> And being able to spend a couple of years on one thing and then pivoting a little bit onto something maybe similar, but, but different, I think only makes you stronger and only expands your kind of range of what's possible. Um, I, I think like I'm like probably better at doing creepy things now that I'm better at doing cute things, you know, like that kind of thing. <laughs> That's, that's what so it comes funny. down to for me. It goes hand in hand. <laughs> <laughs> but then you nail the creepy cute and it's like this rarity. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, everybody's saying good morning uh, in the chat. And uh, hi, Anthony Jackson. Anthony Jackson's a regular. We love to see him here. Hey, uh, yeah. And we've got also Sam Peterson in the chat. Hey, Sam. What's up? Man himself. <laughs> man I know. Himself. We he were just appeared. talking about you. Speak of <laughs> and Nothing good, appear. Sam. Nothing good. <laughs> Uh, so let's jump into this world of quiet. And um, by the way, I just want to give another shout out to like, go check out the Instagram stories of this because this is an ongoing continuous story that Jonah's telling. And so if you really want to know the narrative behind the images, then just listen to the videos. I also have to say you're such a good storyteller, Jonah, <laughs> where you're like, you. actually, you know, obviously writing it but also telling it it's like a little voice acting uh and <laughs> it works really well i absolutely love it because i can see it coming together as a book really easily and telling stories that are book like in uh, a format like that is really intriguing to me it's almost like a book trailer uh if you guys have ever seen that kind of thing uh right. you'll know what i'm talking about there's just like totally bring it to like, life. with 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 the uh, like they, they have like unique um soundtracks and like there's like voice acting and all that. Yeah, totally. I think it's, you know, and it kind of reminds me of like, a, like a, almost like, um, like old, like an old radio production or something, you know, except mm -hmm. that you get to see it kind of be put together. Absolutely. Uh, it's yeah. It was just kind of an idea that I had kind of com uh, that I, a friend of mine actually helped me come up with um, where basically, you know, we, he knows, and he's read my um, fantasy novel, which I left my game company years ago to write a fantasy novel. Oh my and, gosh. and, I know, and and I, to move to move move up here to New York and, and write the fantasy novel, and it was incredibly rewarding experience. And now I'm like think I, you know it's and then I I revised it and revised it, and I was trying to find publishers and all that. And um, I did find a, an agent, um, but then I've had a couple setbacks since then. All good, mm -hmm. 
I um, and now I'm, but but, it, but actually, the act of finding an agent gave me and actually made me feel really good long term, such that I'm kind of like, cool. Now let's work on the fantasy series. And nice. so as I started thinking more and more about like, okay, but here I am, just a, a, a an artist, or known for like just just my art. So how do I tell people, or how do I show people that like I really like story and I really mm -hmm. like character and I really and so my friend came up with this idea um, of you know uh, watching art come together, which everyone likes to do. It's because it's so pleasing, right? It's so satisfying. Mm -hmm. um, but then also just telling a story kind of, at the, you know, at the same time and just experiment with that and see if you can kind of create like a little serialized content. And so I meant to do something much simpler. Um, I always mean to do something simpler. Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> and it then starts as a thing. <laughs> it starts as like a little thing where like, I've got yeah. a fun idea. Like, and in your mind, it's like, it's already done. And you're like, oh, what a cool thing that I, I just thought of and just, you know, hypothetically did. And then the more I started to think about it and the more I kind of came up with this character quiet, the more I got like just really into it um, and really kind of like started feeling like a lot of feelings about the main character and about the world and the possibility. I have feelings. I have feelings. I have <laughs> lots of feelings. <laughs> um, and so I, I kind of, and I, and and yeah, I kind of kind of let it get get away from me a little bit. You gotta um, kind of let it sometimes. I just got yeah. You know what it is? It's like it, it was so different from my usual fare, and I was finding it just so refreshing and enjoyable. You know, because it's so essentially. The story of, of Quiet is like a little, it's like a little fairy tale, basically. And that's what it's meant to make you feel like. It's supposed to, meant, it's supposed to make you feel like you're listening to somebody tell you a story and you're all cozy and tucked in. Right. Um, and you can feel scared for the main character. You can feel like feelings about him and all, and all that. But ultimately, you know he's going to be okay, you know? And so, mm -hmm. um, and that's so different from the, my usual like dark and gritty <laughs> thing that I was kind of like, oh man, I, it's weird that this gives me like a new kind of like enthusiasm and, and pleasure. Um, so yeah, so actually, and I'll, I'll, in a bit, I'll show you guys the, the work I've done because I do most of it um, traditional. So the fact that I'm doing a digital illustration for this is actually rather unusual. Um, I, I just, it, it's kind of like what you said, Anna, like you can kind of see it coming together as a book. Mm -hmm. I kind of just feel like a book with traditional illustrations is kind of just different. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe a somewhat more, um, uh, um, I don't know, I think it, it makes its own mark because I think it is done in a traditional medium. Yeah, um, makes its own mark. <laughs> Pun. Oh, well done. I, well done. <laughs> well done. Um, so, I don't, and so I don't know. I, I mean, I, you know, what do I know, right? I don't know. I'm just a guy who makes monsters. <laughs> who knows but... anything? But yeah, I, I think following whatever medium feels right for you for the piece even like it's you know nobody's telling you you have to do it one way why not experiment <laughs> mm -hmm. totally totally uh by the way sam peterson says uh for sure i feel like uh i'm still trying to define my style slash look always good to experiment so experimenting with digital traditional whatever's outside your wheelhouse it can really work it can shake up your routine definitely definitely i think you know, one thing, actually, one reason I started doing this in, in a traditional format is because about two years ago, mm -hmm. um, I kind of was like feeling like I really needed like a big shakeup. And so I started challenging my Instagram audience to come up with a word a day. Ooh. And um, this was especially after I just um, left like a really big contract and I kind of had like some money in my pocket and some time to spare. And I really wanted to get better at, at, at pen and ink art. Mm -hmm. And so um, I started challenging my Instagram audience to come up with a word a day and I would try to illustrate it in some unique way that I, I you know, that, that, that wasn't like the most obvious um, way to do it. Mm -hmm. I did, and, I, and I used um, traditional pen and ink art to illustrate it. And it ended up being one of the most successful like kind of runs of things I've done. I've had a lot of people be really enthusiastic about it. And so I just think that that's a huge plus in the category of like, try something new, you know, like, because I tried both, both traditional art, pen and ink, um, which is, you know, there's no undo button, right? Um, <laughs> unfortunately. Unfor oh my gosh, like, oof, sometimes. Like there's, <laughs> sometimes, there's, guys. <laughs> I just did a commission for a friend of, of, her, of oh. her daughter and as I filled in the face with marker 
it was like smear, like just oh. a, like right across like the mouth and and eye. And I was like, well, right where it counts, yeah, mm -hmm. right where it counts, right where it counts, <laughs> and no undo. So, um, but anyway, that but I learned so much in trying to um, uh, tackle words that um, um, sounded you know weird or, or weren't, weren't ones I thought of, and then and subject matter that I wouldn't have thought of otherwise. And I, I genuinely. And truly walked away from that year of word of the days, um, feeling like I was better, like in, in all kinds of different ways. And so Amazing. Um, I would definitely uh, do what, what Sam is suggesting here and just really just go for what's outside your wheelhouse because you will emerge kind of stronger. And, you know, and we don't and we don't succeed long term unless we fail. You know, um, we do a lot of absolutely. Failing, so. Agreed, agreed, agreed. All of that good stuff. <laughs> By the way, Anthony Jackson says, so cool how you tell your stories, Jonah. And uh, where do you get your inspiration from when you're telling your stories? Oh, good question. Um, interesting. Um, I get inspiration <laughs> from a lot of different places. Um, you know, nature is a huge inspiration for me. And so, um, you know, I think about a character like Quiet, and in his case, I think of him as, as you can see, he's a little skeleton. Mm -hmm. um, but I think of him as being very small, mm -hmm. always. And so I kind of imagine him walking through a world of like big mushrooms and like, and, you know, big Aww. things where it's almost like he's, he's not like a human skeleton necessarily, or he is, mm -hmm. but, he's, but he's not like, he's kind of his own character. Right. And so when I think about like nature, for instance, and I think about like all the things that it has to offer and in terms of like a, an interesting world and patterns and, and plants and things like that, it makes me get really excited for something like this. Um, mm -hmm. I can show actually um, the other chapters I've done traditionally, if, if people are interested. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It gives a little precursor to what we're seeing. Sure. So here, I, I actually got them all together yesterday. This is the Why, first. Hello. <laughs> Perfect. Um, of, of little quiet. Um, crossing a bridge so cute crossing a little like yeah so this this is when you first meet Petering. him in the story <laughs> um and then drama happens you know in the middle of the <laughs> drama yeah yeah all is well <laughs> there's fire and smoke you know <laughs> smells like cinnamon uh-oh smells like cinnamon oh yeah see <laughs> story oh i'm on um, it and then he's running from the flames and he's running from the flames um and there's that, and then all the lovely creatures too. All oh, the lovely creatures lovely. running with him. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I'm sad then, that they're afraid, but still, they look lovely. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And then, then there's him wandering home, Aww. with the moon kind of setting behind him. And then, these, and then I'll show you some frames that haven't been released yet. Um, Ooh, which, first look, guys! Yeah, Exclusive. First look, he he loses a friend. Oh no, no! Now, this is a big. This is a huge spoiler. Oh, poor baby. He's, so he, he loses a friend and then he, he goes somewhere brave. Oh, heck yeah. Get that pot helmet. Get the pot helmet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's leveling up. <laughs> <laughs> and then he and then he encounters somebody somebody scary. Yeah. Um, Ugh, I... So again, this is what I'm what I mentioned about like, you know, finding inspiration in nature, etc. This is that kind of was like, oh, the patterns, it could be like, you know, like a big face or something. And Absolutely. I also had a book called um Anansi the Spider. Uh, when I was young. Yes. I, I Wait, is that like a Nazi? I feel like that's really familiar. We had a tape that told like African stories. Is that from there? Definitely. That's ah! it. Exactly. That's so cool. And oh so I kind of just did this kind of like geometric pattern, kind of just because I remember him having patterns and um, stuff so like that. Cool. And so... Yeah, so I won't I won't spoil it all, um, but the but. <laughs> oh my the, gosh, you have so much of this already. I have well, I have twelve chapters so far, um, and then I'll just show you this this second to last one, which is this is the villain. So this is what I was talking about with size. Um, yes. You know, there he is. He's small. He's kind of hiding, um, and then we have kind of like this big and and you know it's funny because I originally conceived of this project um, or this character years ago in that I that I started you know thinking about my own video game career. Mm -hmm. And about how many games you play where like, you know, level one, you're going through the dungeon and you're killing skeletons and leveling up. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, if you're one of those skeletons, like that's, that's a really bad life. Like that sucks. Like that's <laughs> really like, there you you're are. just a pawn. Dark, minding your own business. And like, what if you were afraid of the dark? You know, like what if you're a skeleton who's like scared of the dark and mm -hmm. you're lonely and you're all alone. And then there's this big 
rampaging barbarian that just storms in one day and kills everyone the you hero. know. The hero, yeah. The hero, yeah. And then he kills everyone you know. And I'm like, wow, that's a really, that's that's like turning the whole video game thing on its head. Absolutely. Um, I didn't I didn't totally pursue it um, as a, um, as like a, as like the theme. I didn't say like, this is him in a dungeon and he's a level, he's a level one skeleton, but that's where the idea came from. Right. Um, oh, his tiny little knife. He looks like he could just do nothing against that guy. Yeah, exactly. But the, ax, <laughs> the ax is bigger than he oh. is. Yeah, exactly. Um, I did this on, on, on Behance actually. Um, so you can watch me put this together if, for anyone who's interested. Um, yes. it's, not, it's not done. I kind of just, but what often happens is that when there's not like a due date on something, I kind of do something 70% of the way. And then I'm like, cool. Like, now thing number two and i go on so. <laughs> absolutely and uh this looks awesome by the way if you follow jonah on behance then you'll get notified every time he goes live so Woo. just click the little button a little follow Do it. <laughs> Do it. Woo. oh and i just appreciated the video by the way if you guys are clicking buttons then you might as well appreciate yeah that's right <laughs> by the way uh reaver by mike was talking about doing uh traditional artwork and how there's no one do he says oops just misspelled your tattoo <laughs> <laughs> i've uh, had I've, I've had some people get tattoos of some of my work but no not way. like not like um you know uh, uh things i've designed tattoo wise but from video games right totally and i have to i have to say sometimes it's really cool and sometimes i'm like Listen, I made that. You, are you sure you want that on your body? Like, yeah, are you sure? Are you, are you sure? Like, I don't, it doesn't. And then they send me a picture. Like, I did it. I did the thing and I see it. And I'm like, <laughs> it's oh, done. You can't take it oh, back. <laughs> you got that on your neck, huh? Oh boy. That's really cool. Like, wow. And then I'm like, and I feel real guilty. Right. Cause I, I feel like I was. Oh, don't feel guilty. Oh, that's so funny. It's their decision completely. They just love that piece so that's much. True. That's true. But I totally understand the pressure. My sister has asked me to design her tattoos and I'm like, um, maybe in 40 years I'll feel confident enough for that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You're still, does your sister have tattoos? Oh yeah, all over. So oh, it okay, wouldn't so be like- You would like add one of yours like in there. Oh yeah, no, I know that like, I could do something, but it's the, the pressure of feeling like I'm going to mark a person for the rest of their life with what I'm drawing right now. Totally. Uh, and that is a lot of pressure, but I'm, yeah. I, I am, uh, commend tattoo artists who can do that. Uh, one of my favorites, uh, Natalie Hall, she was an illustrator oh. first and then started doing tattoos. And I'm like, it just merged so well because she does them herself. Like it's not just her designs being done by another artist. Mm -hmm. um, she, she's incredible. And, and incredible. she definitely has like, she definitely has her style. Oh um, yeah. And, and I mean, but it's like when you get to that level, you know, when somebody comes in and saying, like, oh, I want like a heart with mother that, you know, someone like that is kind of like, no, I don't, I don't do that. Like you do. Yeah. It's you, boutique. I put my know? heart on you. Like, yeah, you, know. you don't get to decide what's on mm -hmm. you. I mm -hmm. do, <laughs> which is mm -hmm. a whole trust thing, but there are people lining up around the block for her work. So she's doing, she's doing it right. <laughs> oh, she is doing it right. Oh my gosh. I can't yeah. like, I might, you know, sometimes I'm sometimes I message her on, on social media. I'm like, like, please notice me. Like, <laughs> I, I, I love your work. I love this video. Yeah. No, I, I saw her uh, last year at Lightbox just sitting and chilling. And it was one of those moments where I'm like, I don't want to mess up a celebrity's day. Mm, no. <laughs> Which is so funny when you're at an art convention feeling like I can't talk to the artist. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I feel the same way. I feel like like I being in New York, there's a certain like New York thing where when you see a celebrity, mm -hmm. you were like, it's, it's almost like you're like, like you're like, the whole thing is like, be cool, be cool. They don't say anything. It's cool. Like you're just both, you're just two New Yorkers just hanging out. Right. I was once um, totally on right. a subway <laughs> late at night, sitting across from Michael Sarah from Arrested Development. No way. Yeah. But for like, but for like 20 stops and he's sitting there reading a book with his like very fluorescent orange beanie on. And I was like, <laughs> and, and it's just me. Perfect. No one else is there. No one else is sitting around us. And I'm like, it's just me and Michael Sarah. And I couldn't say anything. I was yep. just like, it's just hard. Gotta, just be cool, Jonah. Just be well, cool. Well, it's like, what do you even say? Cause you wanna like make a good impression, I guess. Like you don't wanna be that jerk or whatever, but also what do you say that's fun? <laughs> like, yeah, what do you say that's okay. fun? Exactly. <laughs> and, like, and like, if I were them, like, 
Like what? If, like what if they didn't? What if he didn't want to talk to me? And I was just like, "Hey, Michael, I love your work." And then we, and then he's like, "Thanks, great." And then we just sit from across from each other for the next fifteen stops. Yep. Like that's really awkward. Like, that's how it goes. <laughs> anyway, sometimes. But uh, by the way, Lillian says huge eyelash spider. Heart, heart, heart. Oh. <laughs> oh, and Martha Johnson says heart, heart, heart. Oh, cute. Oh, yeah. Lillian and Martha, I know you guys. Hi. Ah, we got regulars from the streams. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty great. Also, Reverb Mike says Lord of the Rings, probably reminded from. Um, I feel like the huge Viking over the tiny little creature. It feels yes. kind of like that. I love. Yes, it. the the like the the um the Nazgul. Yes, exactly. But I, I literally, I was trying to figure out like, how do I express in one shot him hiding and all, and I was, and I, I was like trying to figure out like, how do I not, not make this look like Lord of the Rings? And in the end, I was like, I'll just change the angle, and that's absolutely no. It's got the essence without looking like it. Like obviously, mm -hmm. different characters, different everything. But uh, the feeling that he's basically like the Viking is standing on top of him, like he's almost completely vertically over him. Like, oh my gosh, the intimidation right. factor. <laughs> yeah, totally. Poor um, quiet. It's funny that you mentioned that, um, Anna, because I, for the first time, this is when I was talking about like leveling up in this, in the traditional realm, mm -hmm. um, doing traditional drawings and then quiet, especially as a project is the first one. I've, first time I've ever thought about composition uh -huh. as storytelling. Um, oh yeah. Cause when I worked, I mean, you know, <laughs> this like, that door. <laughs> in and out and like, this, is, this is, this is what I'm talking about when I said, like, I so much learned from you. Like I just figured out that that's a thing, you know, like I just, I'm I'm a I'm an artist full time. I'm 38. I'm just like, oh wait, you can use composition to tell a story. Wait, what? Oh, it's amazing. So I did think about like um, huge, large, looming, you know, looming dark shape mm -hmm. and little white character right down here, you know, and right and think about Contrast how one is overpowered every way. the other. And in, <laughs> in a piece like this, for instance, um, I wanted to convey a sense of like the forest is burning down. You got to run away. You know, it's dangerous. How do I convey the immediacy of that? And so I made the whole composition um, slanted. Yeah, Dutch and that camera. <laughs> this little, and he's this little ball. And then there's this really big Indiana Jones style ball. Yeah. Um, on top of him. And it's rolling down the hill. And so that's kind of like, the, the, these are the compositional elements, like the big sphere, the tiny sphere, and the slanting right um, angle to you know and so again i don't know how if i'm doing a good job or not i just know that i'm trying it's to great. do it and it's been really <laughs> and it's been really fun to try to like use that as a new tool um Absolutely. and so in a piece like this for instance i want i want like a feeling of convergence like all around and i did i've done some value studies um here and oops not that <gasps> one this one oh this so kind of, cool Thank you. I did this over on Behance. And again, just trying to figure out like, how do I create an isolated little character and then create this feeling of things coming in? So absolutely. So in over the course of world. today and tomorrow, I hope to get, you know, the art, the, the, the actual pen work here that I'm the mm -hmm. outlining here to, to start heading this direction, but just with a greater de degree of fidelity. So. Right. So is that your favorite way to work is like a uh, line based and then underneath it, you have a layer of value. Yes, um, I think it is. Um, I am trying to basically, I do a lot of thumbnailing. Um, mm -hmm. And so on the, I wish I'd brought them up beforehand. Um, I won't go searching for the file now. Yeah, um, don't worry but, about it. But, but um, I try to do as much thumbnailing as possible. And I and these days I really try to, when I think of a little composition, I thumbnail it from multiple perspectives first. Um, because I find that often we come, we, and especially someone like myself who might be more um, focused on kind of detail and 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 all these little things. I sometimes I kind of lose the forest for the trees. Right, totally. And I think, which I think probably a lot of you guys out there are familiar with. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> you know, where you basically, you know, you spend so much time you know, um, getting this one little thing to look good. And then you zoom out and you're like, well, it's, it's, it needs to be two inches over to the left or like it needs mm -hmm. to be rotated five degrees, you know, and it just kills you. Yep. Um, and so I've, I've figured out that the best way to um, approach um, a lot of my work these days to save myself time in the long term is to put some time up ahead 
um, to kind of plan things out, et cetera. So who knew planning works? <laughs> <laughs> who knew? What is who this? <laughs> It's a secret of the industry. You'll never get it. <laughs> I know. Well, I, you'll, never, you'll never get it. It's insider information. Yeah. yeah. It's very, you know, yeah. got to work for this. Um, by the way, just real quick, Samuel says, uh, Jonah, have you ever considered drawing your character in Illustrator so that it could be used in another application? That's a really, really good question. Um, you know, I would never, I would, my answer would have been no for like a long time because Illustrator, um, is a tremendous program, but that one that doesn't necessarily cater to my strengths, mm -hmm. which is I tend to work, especially because I, when I'm, when I'm feeling creative and I want to create something, I tend to work really fast. Um, right. especially here on stream, I think a streaming helped me, um, kind of speed up my, my flow because I became very aware of people watching, mm -hmm. uh, and that people want to be entertained and I need to be entertaining. Um, it also, it also means, you know, I'm also of the mindset that like the faster I can do an illustration, uh, or the faster I can get it down on paper and screw up the faster I can start fi fixing and just, and just kind of the faster I can learn. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, but you know, recently somebody on my, um, who followed me, who follows me on Instagram, um, did this amazing work where they took, um, quiet and they also took another piece of mine called vanquish and they made little illustrations, uh, uh, anim animated illustrations from it. And actually seeing things move, like, you know, like cloaks blowing and, and characters balancing on logs. They, they took, they took quiet and made him kind of balancing on a log and um, with like the butterflies fl flitting about. It was the first time in a long time that I'd, I'd considered movement, you know, again. So <laughs> great question. That was from Samuel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, or Samuel Santos. Yeah. Samuel Santos. Yeah. Samuel, I, I, I never thought about it before. And then now it's kind of got my brain kind of buzzing a little bit, or I'm kind of like thinking a little bit more about the possibilities. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Um, and I'm thinking um, about, you know, ways that you can make a piece of art, kind of give it multiple purposes and, or, you know, give it certain degrees of animation, et cetera. I don't know. It'd be, it, it's really interesting idea that I've just started thinking about. So that's a great question. Absolutely. And movement. Ooh, yes, I agree. Uh, along those same lines, Lillian says, quiet stickers, just saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm it's really, just time. <laughs> I love that idea. Um, you know, the only reason I won't do it right away is because of um, not being able to go to conventions where you, where you can. I know. Oh, so yeah. sad, Anna. You know, it is, I've loved the online conventions though. Have you gone to any of those yet? Um, no, I haven't. Oh, okay. So Lightbox and Max, I did online this year. Uh, and I have to say they were quite enjoyable. It's basically like this, like a lot of live streaming. Some of them were pre-recorded, and then you get access to them afterwards. And it's a lot of uh, the content of a a convention where you would go and learn at talks and things like that. The yeah. downside is the, I'd say the um, talking to people in person. Cause a lot of times I think the biggest thing that conventions can give you is connecting a face to a name or yeah. to work yeah. <laughs> most importantly. Uh, and you just don't get that quite as much, but um, it's still like, it, it was amazing that uh, Max was free. Lightbox was free and you could uh, like pay for extra things that kind of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So just amazing that that happened at all. I do think that um, it's probably just a blip in time where it's like, it'll never be quite that way again. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully, <laughs> honestly, yeah. I still prefer in-person conventions for sure. Yeah, I, I do too. And I'm, I, I, I've only been to like, literally like one last oh, year. Oh, really? Yeah, I just, well, because again, like I never really worked traditionally. I never like tried to sell my, I kind of was a, such a freelancer, you know, Yeah. working purely through the internet. And I just never, and I never had any friends who were into them. And you kind of need friends now to like kind of drag you sometimes Let's to things. Let's go, come on. <laughs> I know, well now, but you have to understand, I did one and then I was addicted. And then I was like, I, oh, and then yeah. I, I had signed up for like five or six this year. <laughs> um, oh no, are you getting? I, I was already, I like bought a bunch of inventory. I bought like all these different things. I was getting so excited. I bought like banners from behind me and all that. I was like this, I'm so excited. Like, I, cause I had so much fun. Like, it's really fun. Like the people who go to these conventions are like my kind of nerd. Like, yes, no, just, I totally feel that. 
they're just, it, and it doesn't matter like what they're into. They're just into things. And yeah. I think, Passion. I imagine you probably feel the same way, Anna, but I think there's like nothing worse than somebody who's like not interested in the world. Absolutely. Know? Yeah. So like, Curiosity is everything. Curiosity is everything and passion and like, and so I think that everyone you meet at those events, like it just feels like they have like so much passion um, and so much excitement. And so it's just really, it's totally exhausting, you know, right? It, like you feel like wrung Absolutely. out like a sponge at the end of the day, mm -hmm. but, but you feel also just in, the whole experience is like invigorating. So right. I, 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 in thinking about quiet and in thinking about the possibilities of quiet um, and where maybe I would like to take it, um, I thought a lot about like stickers. I thought about a lot about like post postcards. Oh, I could you already know, I, see a, a wall full of prints of the entire story. Right? Like, wouldn't that be like, imagine just like, you know, these all just like many, yeah. many them. like Gallery there's a lot of possibilities there. And so I just, um, I was very saddened by that. But like you said, this is a moment in time and these things come back. And like, actually, what's actually really exciting about all this, the upside of this is that we do, do something like Adobe Live and there's even more um, emphasis on kind of the, um, on, on structuring this in just the right ways and in getting everything lined up just right. And I think it just improves the quality and frequency of, a, of an event like this um, going forward. So I think mm -hmm. that there's a lot of like really cool things that I think will, will come of this time as well. For sure. A big one is live streaming. I think that it's awesome that we're getting artists like you just like, oh yeah, uh, I make art live now. <laughs> yeah. I'm like 10 times more accessible all the time. It's awesome. It is awesome. And I think a lot, I think it, it, you know, just the fact that there's so many people right here on stream right now who are watching from all over. Yep. The world. We got the whole um, world. I had like the other day I had, I had like four different folks all speaking Spanish to me on my stream. And I, I speak some Spanish very badly and I was speaking back to them, but none of them were from nice. the same country. And I was oh, like, wow. they were all from like even different, they were like from different hemispheres and they were just all hanging out. I'm like, that's really cool. Like that's Absolutely. very cool. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very like kind of cool place and time to be, you know, um, to be an artist, to be a creative um, because there's so many amazing um, resources um, available through the through the web and I think you know you and I've kind of worked with Adobe for so many years now through their live streaming etc they like Adobe slow clap I mean like <laughs> just like just like providing such a wonderful like house for creatives and and encouraging this it's just like it's very it's just very cool it's just very cool and Absolutely. it opens up a whole world of possibilities for for a lot of people because I, I do believe I mentioned that I'm a fantasy art illustrator. Um, a lot of people ask me why I don't teach at an institution. And mm. a lot of that comes down to, I don't want to teach to people in one location who can afford a tuition, you know, and who can afford to like live like, you know, in, in this city or that city or this country, or that, that country. Right, there's that bar to entry. Is that barrier to entry. And yeah. with live streaming or, you know, education online, I can reach a kind of a much more limitless crowd for mm. way less to, to no money. Mm -hmm. And I can just like, and, and in that way, just kind of like give in like a much bigger way. So it's really, it's pretty lovely. Can we just give Jonah a slow clap now? Woo! <laughs> for thinking of things like that and also just wanting to give back to the community is a huge thing. Uh, I find most successful artists have that kind of attitude and thank you for also having that <laughs> like you know it's Thanks. it's something everybody needs everybody needs that like open the door behind you for somebody else to come through yeah i mean listen there's so much room for all of us you know and and i i, I also just feel like um as as artists you know you have every, you know everyone has their own voice that they can find Mm -hmm. um, and there's lots of different kinds of art. And I just feel like people would be happier if they did more art and or artistic creative expression things. I think that humans, we are creators and it's important to our souls to, to be creative. And I think, I mean, literally, I know just by virtue of the fact that I'm here streaming and I'm looking through the camera at you guys right now, I know everybody who's watching you feel the same way and you are the same way because you would not be here watching this stream right now if you weren't creative, if you weren't curious, if you weren't passionate. 
and um, you know, you you would just be you know playing Smash Brothers or or you know <laughs> watching reruns of you know Home Makeover. Um, now there's anything wrong we'll with be that. Doing as well. that later, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now there's anything wrong with that either. But it's just like you know, it's it's you're here because you're curious and you want to learn and you want to interact and all that. And I think that's just a really beautiful thing. Um, it is. Yeah. Um, real quick, I'm just going to catch up on the chat for a second. Uh, Sariel, I think, says, a quiet plushy. Let's go all in, Jonah. Come on. <laughs> Ariel, uh, yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. Sariel's, Sariel's a friend of mine. Oh, nice. I love yeah. it. Oh, They're we love crazy. to see friends in the chat. Uh, by the way, Sanjana says, does Jonah do references? So I'm guessing like using reference in your work. Um, uh, I do. I do. I haven't used one for this one. Um, um, don't have a hydro reference. Come on. I, I don't have a hydro <laughs> reference. I searched for hydras, um, beforehand. All the only hydras that exist are the kind of like the very, very small ones that like exist in stagnant water and they're not quite the same. Mm -hmm. Um, they're like, uh, but I actually, tomorrow I'm intending to bring some stock footage to, um, the table because I am going to be looking at pictures of water. Um, maybe pictures maybe of, of bone maybe, but also most importantly, pictures of like fish and like catfish. Cause um, I'm just finishing up the kind of line planning now. I can definitely do more planning, but I kind of just get bored. <laughs> and <laughs> Same, I know what you mean. <laughs> I just want to move it along and like get to the coloring stage cause that's really the fun stage. And so um, I am, um, I'm, but I want to like study the way like light ripples off like fish skin and get that really creepy cold look um going on in here so yes tomorrow i'll be bringing in, in reference and, a, and as a as a general practice um for advice giving i would always recommend reference i think reference is like it's just you know even if you don't draw something like it looks like in the actual picture that you referenced reference gives you ideas um and it, and it gives you ideas you wouldn't have thought of otherwise and i think yeah sometimes as creatives we kind of get really wedded to our own kind of like oh what we just thought of when our work would so often be kind of more interesting um if when we bring in ideas that didn't necessarily start with us because i, mm. I believe that we can't really output um really cool creative things unless we spend time inputting um, things. So you can't like think of something really cool if you haven't like read something really cool. <laughs> right. Um, and, and you don't be, know what you don't know. <laughs> like, you don't know what you yeah. don't know. Exactly. And, and, and if you're trying to create and you're, you're not using any fuel from the mm -hmm. outside to create, what you have is going to be pretty low on calories. So <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but also, yeah, I like, 10 times over agree with everything for sure. Um, Harriet, Ferry, and Lillian all say that they agree uh, that doing conventions from far away is really good for not having to uh, con or, uh, travel. And like, it's that barrier to entry that we were talking about as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's all very important to the conversation. Like, barrier to entry, uh, experiment, uh, like all of like use reference. Uh, I think all of that kind of works together because it's, it's basically the art community. Like all of that comes back to all of us creating together in a way, uh, mm -hmm. and not creating from scratch, which I definitely agree with. Um, by the way, let's see. Um, Judy is asking, does anybody else find that there are they struggle with artistic ideas? Uh, I can easily duplicate and modify an idea, but struggle coming up with original ideas, which is frustrating. What do you think? Um, I think that comes down to um, kind of what we just mentioned about um, using reference. Um, because I think um, that's a, it's a great question, Judy, and it's a question I definitely get a lot. Um, when I'm uninspired and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm often, I mean, I'm often inspired, but I'm often uninspired as well. And what <laughs> I do then is I just kind of start studying from the real world. And so I'll hop on Pinterest or I'll open a book or whatever, and I will kind of absorb something, you know, some, mm -hmm. some idea, some, um, uh, a, a new look, whatever, you know, it, it, I'll, and then I'll, and then I'll draw it um, or I'll go onto in Instagram and I'll look at other people's art and I'll draw, I'll try to copy it, you know, um, really quickly. And I find that what happens then is that your brain starts to fill up 
um, with kind of cool things that like kind of like weren't there before. And I think that the biggest problem when we're feeling uninspired, uh, what's happening is that, that we were just, we just don't have anything in us to put out. And so like quite, quite literally copying um, can give you, can, can kind of teach you um, a lot of interesting kind of, it's almost like adding words to your dictionary kind of, or adding, right. or adding um, food to um, uh, individual foods to like a, a pot of stew, right? Like if we don't have anything to cook with in our mental kitchen, then you're right. Like we're just going to go hungry and we're, and we're going to be just kind of boiling water for a while, staring at it and wondering why nothing appears. But why I no find food? that that just adding, um, adding in um, kind of anything really, um, and and maybe being like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna step back from the soup, and I'm gonna make like a quick PB and J. But I'm gonna use coriander and then this strange green that comes from you know um, Indonesia, like whatever. Like, and 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 what, and what I mean by that analogy is, I mean, as an artist, I will go on to to. Um, Pinterest and I'll look at like Indonesian art and then I'll just copy some and then I will look at pictures of, you know, flora from South, you know, Southeast Montana and I'll draw something like of that. Very and then specifically I'll draw... Southeast Montana. <laughs> that yeah. was Southwest. Okay. And then, and then basically by, you know, at, at the end of, you know, 20, 30 minutes, my, my, my hand is accustomed to, to making certain gestures now, or I have certain images in my mind and, and then I can kind of just start creating based on that and basically be like, you know what, I'm going to make a, an, an, an you know, a, a, you know, a, 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 something from Montana, like a plant from Montana in like an uh, Indonesian art style. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly it's like, you you've now have ingredients and you can throw them together and maybe they don't taste good. But the point is now you're stocking your mental kitchen and mm -hmm. you have, you have ingredients to put down. And so I find that I am, whenever I'm uninspired, and that is, you know, I'm often, I don't know what to do. I, often I don't want to do what I usually do. And I kind of am sitting there being like, what am I going to do? I actually have never really regretted just pulling up like Pinterest or, you know, stock photography or just whatever, or um, and just looking at things and trying to copy them um, because I just walk away being like, cool, now I know how to do X, you know, and I'd never even thought about X before. So that's what I, that's what I recommend is, is, is research and sketching. And, um, I think also sketching is like, just like once you start making art and like loosening up your arm, you just start getting better, um, and start getting more into it. So I know for a fact that, you know, part of the reason I th do so much thumbnailing these days is I just know that what I do in the first half hour or hour of when I sit down to make art is just not going to be that great. Right. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. It's like, oh yeah, warming up is everything. <laughs> it's warming up is everything, and and I think that we oftentimes get discouraged. We sit down and we draw something, and it's not good, and we go, well, I guess I'm not good. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I guess me as a human being is just not good. <laughs> I'm not good. I am. Yeah. It turns out I'm worthless. You know, like that's ah, whoops. that's like a very that's a very common experience. Um, yep. And so I think that we have to be easy on ourselves, and we have to remember that that we owe it to ourselves to um to take that time to be easy on ourselves and to kind of just like warm up because there's a lot more in the bank um that you can get to if you just take the time to um time and space to experiment and to mess around and to mess and to mess up i always say and some of my followers like lillian um and serial know um you know if you have if, if you sit down and make bad art for two hours you should celebrate like because, <laughs> because we all have we all have like certain number of, of pieces of bad art we have to do to make good art you know um whether that's over the course of our career or in a given day um and so sitting down and making bad art like believe it or not as long as you were like applying yourself and still messing up believe it or not like you're much better off as an artist than you were you know um uh, uh, before you did that bad art. And so I'm, I'm a huge proponent of, of bad art. Um, 10 times over agree. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so much. Cause yeah. How are you going to get to that stage? Like my big thing is I hate the blank canvas a lot. Uh, and so I need to put anything down, anything, if it's bad, good, whatever. Uh, and then you can edit it, which I think I'm much more of an editor than a creator. 
<laughs> like, you know, just put it down. I know, down what, you and I know what you mean. Yeah, because yeah. actually, it's funny because your your artwork, um, it looks deceptively simple, <laughs> and it looks it look you make it look really easy. Deception. Because, yeah, but, but that's <laughs> but you're right. But it's like you spend so much time like with all the weird little details and getting it just right. But in the end, it comes together looking like easy breezy and like lightweight and wonderful and like it's not the process is not like that um it's a grind just, man grind grind so much friction yeah yeah but i uh, thank you uh i definitely feel that with almost every artist i see and i know it's not the truth it is a, a beautiful lie <laughs> to make it look easy definitely uh definitely. by the way krishna says hello jonah well, hello. hello. Um, <laughs> it seems like you've had some experience with agents. What advice would you give someone who has a co uh, who has to contact one and pitch a project? Have a good one. Oh, that's great. That's a great question. Um, okay, um, keep your letter to just one page. You know, keep it keep it short, keep it sweet, um, as as concise as you can be about your plot and your story, um, and. So, you know, especially in the realm of like fantasy, mm. it can be really easy to be like, then there's this thing and then there's this thing and then these things go blah and there's a war, and, you know, but like actually what you need to focus on uh, and what, what, what agents are really looking for is what's the basic human story? You know, mm, so-and-so right. so feels this way because of this and they embark on this quest that challenges them in, in this way and, you know, in the end, have learned this lesson, you know, or that kind of thing. Where it's, it doesn't have to be so trite as that, but essentially, they want to know why will the average reader pick up this book and enjoy it? Like, why? And not sorry, not just enjoy it. Why will they connect to it? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really important um, piece of it. You know, a, a why will a human being enjoy this book, and why will they connect to it? And I think that that's something that people are really, really looking for um, in an application because they want to know that you as a storyteller um, are keeping tabs on your central emotional conflict um, and, you know, keeping tabs on and, be, and, and being aware of the reasons why the story should be told and why people will connect to it. They're also thinking about, um, um, can this be sold in a, you know, it, it, the so-called elevator pitch is called elevator pitch because it's like, you're in the elevator with the executive for three floors. How are you going to make him by, by floor number three? Go, like, go, go. Walk out of that elevator being like, <laughs> I want you as my next client, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and if you're still, you know, describing, you know, the evil warlock, you know, by the time we hit the, hit the third floor, like dude's like, sorry, man, I got a full, I got to go. I got to, you know? And so um, keep it simple, keep it concise. Uh, focus on making, giving it like a nice hook. Like, Ooh, just, just, just tell them enough for them to be like, well, that's a story that I would want to listen to, you know, read. And also just make it, you know, um, um, clear um, how that, that, that this is a story that is with all the fluff and all that taken away, it's a, it's a human, it's a nice human story or a necessary human story. I think yes. that's, that's a big part of it. Uh, earlier, there was a comment in the chat that said, uh, you know, you're saying you had a lot of feelings about Quiet Story immediately. And they said, um, sorry, I can't remember who said it, uh, but they said that if you didn't feel emotion about a character, your audience probably wouldn't. And so yes. it's, yeah, a lot of that, like conveying the emotion, making somebody feel something about your story, even if it's just the tiniest bit. I know a lot of people who want to go into like, and then in chapter three, and then like, you know, 10 years down the line and all that stuff. And it's like, that's cool. But that's like second meeting material. That's like, yes. once they're already invested in the emotion, the core of it. Uh, and I, I uh, had a mentor, uh, Lee White, who um, is a children's book illustrator, and he would always talk about like stripping a story down to its parts rather than thinking of the entirety of it. Uh, his example was Finding Nemo, that yes, it's like this underwater, uh, like m huge world, lots of characters, all this stuff going on. But really, it's a story of a father finding his son and like exactly. stripping it all down to that and then you exactly. say and it's underwater by the way <laughs> yes exactly that's exactly right and you know a, a story of a father finding a son is 
one that every father can relate to. And right. every child would also put themselves in the position of Nemo and be like, oh my gosh, I am lost, you know? <laughs> and, and and what does it mean to be brave? And what does it mean to make friends and, and you know, and relying on yourself and believing in yourself, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yes, exactly. That's a perfect example. <laughs> oh, Samuel Santos, by the way, has claimed credit for that. Great, great note, Samuel, for the emotions. Because <laughs> uh, that is a really good note that like, you have to feel something about your work for sure. Uh, and you can't expect other people to feel stuff if you don't feel stuff. You should be your own biggest fan, everybody. Exactly. <laughs> that's, true. that's true. And I think that's another reason why, um, and I, th I know this goes against many people's grain, but when you care about something and you're talking about it to somebody else, um, don't be like, oh, it's just this stupid thing I have or don't, or don't talk it down. Because mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's exciting to you, it's definitely exciting to other people. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people kind of feel like really self-conscious or like that their, that their idea, you know, they have imposter, imposter syndrome and they think their idea is stupid. Like have more faith in yourself um, because mm -hmm. it, it will help you. And this is something I've, you know, I've grappled with over the years, um, but it will help you believe in yourself, believe in the project, and it will help other people get excited. Um, yeah, I, I, exactly. That's exactly yeah. right. Uh, is there anything that you've ever found in your grappling with this? Because I think everybody grapples with it, uh, feeling like, you know, you have to be, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your work. Uh, are there any techniques that you've found to do that? Anything tangible we can give the audience? <laughs> interesting. That's interesting. Um, it's a hard question to answer. You don't have to do it immediately. Just think, yeah, think on it. <laughs> that's, well, yeah, okay. I, I, let, me drink, let me drink a sip of water and think about Yeah, it. everybody hydrate. Get mm -hmm. some water. Here we go. I'll do it the same. Um, by the way, also, we have a question that I have. Uh, Ferry asked, how did you find, uh, how do you find a title for your artwork? Which is also an interesting question. Cause I, I always go for like the most obvious thing where I'm like, scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever title things? That's interesting. Well, let me go back to the previous question. I don't have. Yeah. Yeah. Answer, sorry. Throw out everything just, at you. But I'll just mention it. It was, uh, so the question was, um, uh, is there anything that I can, you, one can do to kind of big yourself up or, or get yourself excited about a project? I, I do think talking about it um, and trying to summarize it to its kind of bare, bare potential, bare essentials, um, as your your mentor had mentioned, you know, kind of the, what, what is the essential ingredient about that? And do you care about that? And if you care about that, then everybody, you know, the other others will as well. Um, mm -hmm. I think also finding um, uh, uh, what's the emotional hook for you? And I think really focusing on that, because I think that when people talk about things they're passionate about or characters that they love in a, in a franchise or a book, they get, you can see it in their face. They get really animated yeah. and that's really like addictive and really exciting. And so I think that, um, focusing on those things, I think, I think like, um, and especially when you're talking to other people, I think can help a lot. Um, and then and you know being excited you know knowing kind of knowing what you're excited about like not just the whole thing but like being able to articulate it and say it out loud what you like about a certain thing i think helps you from maybe floundering in conversation about it and, and basically being able to just be like there's this character quiet he's really small and cute like he's out there he's he's smaller than everything else in the world but he's really brave and like everyone else be like oh that's wonderful you know that's <laughs> And that's it. And that's basically it. But being able to summarize that, you know, or for instance, in my, in my fantasy series, my main character is she starts out, you know, uh, around 13 or something. And by the time the series is over, she's like 22 or something. But it's essentially it's a story about um, um, a girl who feels hopeless. She's the last of her kind and she feels hopelessly alone. And mm -hmm. even though she is essentially a psychic and connects to many different kinds of people, she feels ever more isolated and out of place in a world that doesn't seem to have any place for her. Mm -hmm. Um and again, it's those that essential basic core that that people can really connect to. Um, yeah, like they don't have to be psychic to understand the struggle of being othered or like not being able to relate to others. Totally, I did a I did an illustration um, a couple of years back called Demon. Let me just see if I I, I I know where it is. I can just find it very quickly here. And, <laughs> and the reason I bring it up um, is because it is from my book, um, and. I have been, so this is my main character uh, with her metaphorical demon made physical. This Ooh, is a pen and ink art. That's so cool. Um, thank you. And 
the reason I bring this up in particular is because I wanted to articulate the feeling, the emotion, uh -huh. and the idea of this, of a demon being, you know, a demon that, you know, you and I are familiar with, which is something that kind of hangs on your shoulders that like whispers in your ear that won't let you go. Mm -hmm. um, and that demon can take many different shapes and forms. And the reason I bring up this particular image is because when I went to conventions or when I sold prints of this online, it is always from somebody who feels very strongly that they have a demon and that they connect with the image and that, yeah. and I've seen it. And I, I mean, I'm thinking of, of two individuals you know, at a recent convention. And I remember one of them was, um, uh, uh, a veteran of uh, two a couple tours uh, in Afghanistan and I remember him coming in one day and looking at at the piece for a long time and then and then walking away and then coming the next day and his girlfriend was like he was talking about that piece all night like basically. oh my gosh and and it was it was this it was demon and it basically you know it's just just because wow. to look at it and be like I felt that you know I felt that and I think that that's that's kind of the crux of like being able to create create something that 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 connects to people on a on a on a basic level and so if you like you said if you or like samuel said um if you're feeling it if you feel it emotionally then others will as well um, absolutely that's and that's and that's kind of what the, what it comes down to i feel and you have no idea how personal it can be for other people because like yes it's personal for you but that hits at a whole nother level for the veteran like that oh is amazing gosh. I was like so touched because I mean again I I've never I've never been to war like I've never yeah. experienced that and it's very hard and it's very lonely you know because afterwards and so I think that um um it definitely shaped the way I thought about it and 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 made me like kind of have to take it very you know take it very seriously and honor that that feeling on their on their behalf etc. Doesn't it make you feel so important too? <laughs> like, wow, it could really <laughs> impact people here. Uh, art is responsibility, people. Art is responsibility, indeed. <laughs> indeed, it is. It is. Um, yeah, it made me feel exactly like I have now. Now I have to like really do justice, you know? Yeah. To this thing. <laughs> Absolutely. By the way, you filled your canvas with black, so we're done, right? All the pixels are filled. Woo! Did it. Man, what a relief. You know what? <laughs> Let's take tomorrow off. You know? Woo! We deserve it. A lot of work done. <laughs> uh, uh, by know, the way. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. One sec. Uh, Cody Bear spread some words of wisdom when you took a drink of water. Uh, she said, drink water, stretch your hands, and save your work. I just wanted to reiterate that for everyone. Remember to oh, do all yeah, the I things. I saved my work because of that comment. That's really, hey, really Cody. helpful. Thank you very much. Saving us. <laughs> Oh, this is something I wanted to show real quick. Um, yeah. Uh, I just drawn this on a stream earlier so people could see. Um, we're talking about composition and talking about um, and the power of that. And some, some one of my followers um, here on Behance had asked me basically what is composition, and so I was like, that's a really good question. So let me just show you how composition can you know affect things. And I, I know we went over this briefly before, but in this particular piece, and some of these lines are based on on older lines um, that were here. Um, when this, when this was the, my, the, my working draft, right. But essentially this, I, what it comes down to is here are a bunch of, um, here's, here's the point of interest. Here's the center of attention. Mm -hmm. And then to draw attention to that, I have all these lines flowing in. Right. Um, and so just, just a quick side note, just to anybody who's curious about process and thought process, et cetera, just wanted to show that that's kind of what I was thinking when I put it together. And so now that I'm beginning the transition over to darkness, I need to kind of, you know, basically um, kind of keep an eye out for that, you know, and, mm -hmm. and um, try to make sure that what I'm doing, you know, I can, I can deviate, I can add details, I can do all these different things, but focusing on the larger aspects um, of what the composition is doing as a whole is probably, um, worth worth our, our while absolutely yeah having the composition come in at every turn is kind of importante mm -hmm. and uh i i love that you have such a uh not central but you know it's off to the side also we should mention that the asymmetry of the piece um but such a emphasized focal point like you've done so much to make us look there already but it mm -hmm. just it's like building on a strong foundation. Everything you do on top of it is just going to make it better and better, but you've got that like stability at the base, so. 
it really works well. Yes. Uh, yeah. That the stability of the base is, is definitely critical. Well, yeah. Well said. Uh, <laughs> I also, I popped into your stream the other day, uh, and you're talking about possibly glowing fangs. Yes, I was thinking about having their um, um, having the Hydra's um, mouths mm -hmm. be illuminated. I thought that was like a really cool um, idea. Um, awesome. I could do some really cool things for the composition. So I'm trying to, so now I'm kind of, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna spend a little time here roughly blocking things out and we don't have to finesse it here today. I just wanna get things kind of laid out just so. Um, and, but yeah, I was having, I was just thinking like, wouldn't it be cool if you look at some like an illustration like this, like this this value value piece, you can see this kind of like glowing mouth, basically. Absolutely, yeah. And oh. I like the way that those that 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 and the eyes kind of echo his own paleness and and his torch. Absolutely. Because um, ultimately, I will want them to be all very much in the darkness, like the darkness is closing in. Mm -hmm. um, but having those lights, uh, I think will do a really nice thing, you know, a way to kind of bind them. So if I make this, for instance, even more dark um, like this Ooh. and really dark and spooky, oh. um, then then they kind of like, you can see that they kind of like, if the, if the composition was like that, that would be cool too. Right. Because that then fall it's off even scarier just... and you can yeah. see these different, you know, faces and I can make these little, um, you know, like open. And then it basically kind of draws attention to the smiles Right, yeah, you get the essence of the expression without like, yeah, having to render out every detail of the creatures because they're so much in the darkness. Exactly. And then, yeah, it almost makes it feel like the eyes are reflective because of the like luminosity of it. <laughs> yeah. Like cat eyes, like a little demonish. <laughs> I love, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for demons. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly, apparently. Uh, by the way, Cody loves that visual representation of a demon. Oh, thanks, Cody. Absolutely. Um, I got to meet Cody at, a, at a, um, uh, an event, uh, at, a, at an Adobe event, actually. Um, oh, no way. It was, yeah, we, we, were, we were on a, a flight because we, we both, at least at the time, we both lived in New York and we both took a flight there and we took a taxi from the airport together uh, there. And I was like, uh, you're Cody. Like, like, oh, my gosh. Cool. Like, this is so fun. Like, it was really, <laughs> it was really great. It was really great. That is awesome. Uh, Cody now lives in Oregon. And so That's someday right. I will get that face to face. Someday, Cody. I'm gonna, woo, coffee I'm coming shop. for you, it's Cody. <laughs> <laughs> you know that demon? That demon is me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Shauna also says, oh, that's absolutely terrifying. I love it. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I believe about the darkness of the like that really low. Uh, what would you call that? Like a fall off of the light coming from quiet. Yeah. So it's fall, like fall off is the word. Yeah. Very concentrated so that it feels like a depth of darkness around. It reminds me of um, the shrieking of the eels in the Princess Bride. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. And it's funny because it's like you, I can't remember, do you even see them? Like, or are they just- shrieking Very down? little, yeah. I think it's but like right it's before- It's very them. scary. Like they're very scary. Like, like oh, yeah. eels, eels, like as giant predatory things. That's a very scary idea. Mm -hmm. So I can't, I, I, I'm kind of making them look like, like a little bit like catfish or something like this in this one. Yes. Because um, I kind of want to go for that like um, aquatic element. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where that reference comes in where you like have a secondary idea of what to mm -hmm. meld it with exactly yeah exactly right yeah <laughs> so cool uh also this is perfect timing because uh my partner james he just made me a uh deck uh in magic the gathering and it's a hydra deck so Ooh. you're just on that wavelength you know <laughs> Wait, what does that mean a hydra deck tell me more about that uh, there are different creature types in Magic, uh, and you can make decks around all sorts of themes, but our theme for this one was just making Hydras. Uh, and so we kind of looked at all the creatures and what they did, and then built the deck around that ability, which is a lot of putting counters on things. I don't know if you play Magic at all, but... <laughs> I would, You know what? I would have loved it, and I always was jealous of people who um, were playing it because I really, really, really liked the art, and I really liked the fantasy element. And I, I, I didn't have like, I didn't have friends that like, I still, you know, I still to this day in the city here, I don't have friends who are like 
like fun nerd friends. And so oh, like I have, I have, I have lovely friends, but they're just not nerds. And like, like, yeah. like just to put it in perspective, like I worked on Skyrim, which is a pretty good big game. And like, I think like one of them play, has played Skyrim oh. and, that, and that's it. <laughs> and so it's like, it's, it's, it's yeah. just like a, like a funny random thing that like, I just, I think a lot, I think a lot, I meet a lot of gamers and they're like, Oh, it's so cool. I love that game. And my friends are like, he made Skyrim or Fall I think he was in Fallout Boy or something. Uh, or, yeah, it's like Fall like, Rim Sky. Fall Rim. He, knows yeah. like that. he <laughs> makes monsters. He makes dragons. I don't know what that means, but it's a funny thing to say at a party. So yeah, that's I guess. Where them, that's where a lot of them are at. That's so funny. It's like all your parents. That's usually the thing. It's like <laughs> my parents don't understand. It's like everyone doesn't understand. <laughs> Oh, but at least then you get like at the conventions, like we were talking about people who actually understand <laughs> everything about it. Yeah, that is nice. It is nice. Exactly. I think maybe that was part of my enthusiasm. I was like, finally, my people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I love finding nerds so much. <laughs> mm -hmm. I found I found some great nerds here on, on Behance. It's been yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. This is nerd society. Uh, and we say that with pride. So oh, always with pride. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Nerds are the coolest. Cause you remember at the beginning, I was saying people who, people who don't have passions or interests who are mm -hmm. like, they're like always like perpetually like bored with the world. I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> what are you here. doing? You are lame. Like, give me a proper nerd. Like give me someone fun. Oh my gosh. Yes. I totally agree. Uh, I really, just, feel, I, I really feel I really feel like quite actually honestly strongly about that. I'm like if you are not nerdy about something, like if you like you could be like you could have all kinds of different things, but if you're like really if you're like into beekeeping or like metal work or whatever, if you're anything. really into something, I yeah. want to talk to you. And if you're Absolutely. not into anything, like get out of here. Like get out of here. <laughs> oh, all right. So if you're ever in a train car with Jonah Loeb and you're mm -hmm. really intimidated and you're like, I don't know what to say to him because like he's wearing this orange beanie and it's like really intimidating. <laughs> then you just have to be like, I really am into metal working. I usually yes. sculpt bees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would be really into that. I'd be so into that. I'd be like, oh my God, tell me tell more me about more. that. That sounds so cool. <laughs> I totally completely agree. Same here. Oh. Uh, it's a sad thing that um, I feel like a lot of people might be in the place where I was earlier in life. I pretended not to be passionate because people mm. would make fun of it. You know, like I remember um, I had very early on a love for animation and like my sister would make fun of me for watching anime and stuff like that. Totally mm. not anymore. Don't, you know, like I, I'm not ragging on her or anything, but it's just one of those like, you know, self-conscious teenage things. Totally. And so for a long time, I was like, no, no, I don't care. But then I saw Spirited Away and I was like, no, I care. I care a lot. I care I can't deeply. Not. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the first movie that she was like, oh, this is actually amazing. Uh, that was anime. And I was like, yes, 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 yes. Oh my gosh. That must've been like such a, <laughs> um, such a good moment for you as like, a, as like sisters. And as like, a, as an individual, you're like, Absolutely. I have been vindicated. I rented it about 10 times from the Hollywood video and I was just like, Aaron, we're watching this. It's happening. You don't get a choice. Oh God, you remember said it was Hollywood cool. video? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh yeah. We had a Hollywood video down the street. I would bike there all the time. Oh, so fun. Oh, the good old days. Low tech. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have to say having the internet has saved us all just by the way, mm -hmm. if we aren't grateful for that, then what the heck are we doing? <laughs> no, I know. Totally agree. Yeah. When you're younger, it, it, there really is like an emphasis on like, don't be, don't be excited. Don't be enthusiastic. You know, like that's not cool. And it's, Definitely. it's so it's, it's the worst. It's the worst. <laughs> Oh, Dave Stein, by the way, is saying Jonah and I definitely live 20 minutes from each other, by the way. Oh, really? <laughs> and Cody and I live like 20 minutes from each other. So we're just like coupling up on Behance. Apparently we all need to get together on our respective areas. Excellent. <laughs> Although socially distance. Obviously. Yes. <laughs> of course. We at Adobe always promote social distancing, at least six feet, <laughs> wear a mask. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, that's cool. Um, yeah. I guess he's in Brooklyn. That's cool. That's really whoop, nice. Whoop. There's a lot of us Brooklyn. out here in Brooklyn. My cousin's in Brooklyn. Really? Yeah. Come oh, man. visit. Come visit. I miss New York. It's really fun. <laughs> it, it, you know what? It is less fun now at the moment. Oh, but I it, bet. But it will, <laughs> we'll get there. 
we're, we're gonna get it back um and can it's I still go to central still park and just be alone though would that be cool yeah. <laughs> um by the way anthony jackson says the orange beanie will always scare me <laughs> but i will fight that fear <laughs> If you guys weren't here earlier in the stream, you won't get the orange beanie. It was Michael Sarah. It was a whole thing. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gotta watch the replay. Um, let's see. Oh, and Miami, sorry if I'm butchering that name, says, I always imagine that Behance is a place for all the nerds who couldn't find friends in school. Oh, I love it. Oh. Yes. Oh, it's like a safe chat room. It's good. It's good. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, usually, usually the term safe and chat room do not really go together. Yeah. Well, um, when I was growing up, it was wild west of internet. So <laughs> it was it was. Yeah. But yeah, I I definitely agree that like having this community in particular, I think is going to bring up a totally different. Uh, I don't want to say generation because it's not age based, but new group of artists. Uh, where it's so much more accessible. You can learn programs without spending thousands of dollars and you can like just learn to be a better artist every single day from different tips from different artists. So mm -hmm. a huge gamut of learning is now accessible and I love it. I love it. I love it. And I really feel, yeah, the internet has like saved us in that way. And I do like, I know I mentioned this before, but I mean, Adobe's done like a really, really wonderful job. And I, and I say that not because I am on Adobe right now, but because every single time I've ever been on Adobe or worked with Adobe, Adobe has never told me you can't do this. You gotta do this. It's like, it's, it's always, and I, right. I mean, like, yeah, they, totally. they, 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 they've made a home for like every different kind of artist, and they've never dictated to us what to do with our time here. Um, they've just kind of really promoted um, creativity and invention of all different kinds. And I just, I really respect that because I think that's hard to, even if it's well-intentioned among many companies, it's hard to foster. Um, right. Especially in a, in a growing community. And, and I just think it's, I think it's a really hard thing to do um, in general, but I know at this point, so many of the people who, who work over there um, at Adobe and who put, who put in the hours and put in the effort and it is like really like important to them, you know? Um, and I really, I just super respect that, so. I agree. Thank you, Adobe. <laughs> mm -hmm. I always say this, but like, there's not enough good things that I could say about Adobe, which is surprising to feel for a company. <laughs> yes, yes, but it is actually, yes. It's the people they hire. They definitely, uh, like every single person I've worked with at Adobe has been an amazing person as well as an amazing worker who's passionate about what they do. That passion comes back again. <laughs> Huzzah. Uh, by the way, Alice Lee, hey, Alice, is going to be doing doodle therapy later today, but also is in the chat saying, uh, lately I've been personally passionate about figuring out, oh no, it's, it went up, there we go, uh, figuring out the most ideal way to eat a pomegranate. I know it sounds random, but there's definitely a pomegranate enthusiast community on YouTube. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh, yes. Alice. I, oh. I one time, that is really funny, Alice, and I remember uh, I have a friend named uh, Lane. And she's from Seattle originally, but mm -hmm. I, she lived in here in New York for many years. Lane is a wonderful individual. And, but one thing she is very well known for is being very introverted. She likes doing her things her way. She likes to be alone, et cetera. And so the best time I could ever hang out with Lane was I wanted to hang out with her in her kitchen so that she can putter and she can hang. And then she's like in her like zone. And I remember about two years ago, I came in, I came to hang out with Lane one day and she was pulling the seeds out of a pomegranate, you know, just by hand. Individually. Just like, individual little seeds and after i'm talking and i'm talking i'm talking and she's like yeah and she's going along with me and then after like 20 minutes i'm like hey do you want help with that pomegranate and it was as if her like hackles had raised and she was like get away from that no don't i'm doing touch it. My pomegranate. Doing, yeah she's like don't touch my pomegranate i'm doing it and i'm like but it's taking you so long and she's like that's the point i love it it's very relaxing for me and i was like you respect, respect, you know, you know thyself and you like, yeah, know, exactly. she like knew herself. She was like, no, no, no. The point is in the pe is in the taking out of the seeds. And I was like, wow, I respect That's you so, so much right now. Lane. Yeah. You know what you're about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I totally agree with that. It's so funny, but like uh, sunflower seeds were my thing for a while where it was like that oral fixation of like opening it and everything. I was like, yes, yes. This is what I've been craving. Uh, <laughs> And then the salt would burn my mouth because I would eat too many. Um, but the, the pomegranate, I feel, is the very same thing where it's like a, a, an activity as well as a snack. You know, you get everything you want out of it. Mm -hmm. But I've still 
never met somebody who will individually do every seed. That's kind of special. <laughs> she was bare. Yeah, I, I, I just couldn't. I like, I, I kind of, I was like not welcome. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I just wasn't. <laughs> don't touch. <laughs> yeah, don't touch. Yeah, and I respect, I respected it. So. Oh, good for you. You didn't lose an arm that day. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and we all, we've all got our boundaries, you know. <laughs> so. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, by the way, I've been noticing that you're filling things in with uh, the lasso tool and it's an interesting technique you do. You also like fill it with the brush, but after you've lassoed it, is there like a, a technique <laughs> that you'd like to talk about or anything? I don't have a particular um, uh, kind of ethos with regards to this. I'm just, I'm trying to move fast. So I'm doing this. And then if I do this and I paint bucket it, oops, um, paint bucket it. Sometimes you have you have these like very very tiny like little like see that dividing line there? Oh yeah yeah yeah. And so I did that. I kind of just go in with the brush with a high opacity and just like um, it's like my, my brushing right now. There you go. It kind of just goes just kind of you know just goes away. Yeah. So I'm kind of just bouncing back and forth between them. Um, and I'm just I'm kind of being quick because ultimately you know I can I can take away these lines and then I'm left with something like this and then mm. once the background and I'm just kind of separating some of them like this. Definitely. But ultimately, um, I can refine them plenty um, later. Um, but right now, you know, in the interest of serving that kind of grand scheme of getting it look like that, but mm -hmm. better, um, I'm just focusing on kind of getting them outlined, getting them done quickly, um, and getting them um, planned out um, on the page. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Moment. That front right one that comes down, it shows so much depth because of the width change that you have in the body. It feels like you're kind of rushing into the scene with him. Like, <sighs> thank you, thank you. Um, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> you know? One of my followers uh, who is watching right now, Lillian, uh, as I was trying to do uh, come up with com compositions like this uh, for this piece for this live event uh, on Behance a couple of days ago, um, she sent me a, a, a picture that she did really quickly. Um, that had that essential curve down into into the picture, mm -hmm. and so um, I give her credit. She, she <laughs> I was like, you know what? That's cool. I like that the best. Let's go with it. Excellent, uh, Lillian. Shout out. Whoop whoop. Yeah. So it's just yeah. It's good. To, it's good to have, you know, uh, in the, in this case, there's lots of different heads, and they're all going to be doing different things and have different expressions slightly. But mm -hmm. if you know, quiet's got to be. You know, he only has one little sword. He's got to be yeah. pointing at one of them. And so it's, you know, so this was the one, you know, again, talking about composition, you know, taking this big guy and bringing the attention to quiet by just drawing this smooth line down to him and down through the sword, down to his, up his arm. So definitely. Yeah. So keep that in mind also, because we were talking about composition to bring the attention to the focal point, but also like you can take it from all the way outside, like really lead the eye. Uh, it's not just that one central point. Totally. It's something, you know, it's funny because I worked for seven years at Bethesda Softworks making video game characters, but I'm making them in a vacuum. You know, mm -hmm. I would spend, you know, weeks or a month or whatever working on um, one character, kind of molding them like clay, et cetera, et cetera. And I never thought about a canvas. Um, mm -hmm. And it's only in recent years where I've, I've thought about how to use the canvas. And it's a very exciting new thing for me. Um, and a new, it's, it's kind of like a new realm of learning. And so I'm getting really into it. Um, and so, yeah, through what you just described, you know, bringing, bringing something in from way outside, um, into the composition, um, it can be very effective and very, you know, just to really pull the eye in. Mm. Um, so yeah. Absolutely. Love that. Uh, Cody bear says, yeah, that foreground eel adds so much depth. Lillian says, I take credit gladly. <laughs> uh, and David Piart Port Porta, sorry if I'm butchering once again. Uh, wow, this composition is incredible. Nice job. Whoop, whoop. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm pleased with it. I, I I I don't have much opportunity to just kind of like create like a fun um, scene like this, um, kind of randomly. Uh, it, you know, I have the 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 story for uh, for quiet the first 12 chapters all figured out but um i actually don't like th this scene that we're doing today doesn't actually belong anywhere in the story that i know about all i know <laughs> that is that i know about <laughs> that, yeah that i know about that you know that can that can be remedied um very easily but when i think about like something like um tin tin or something like that and i think about mm -hmm. all the different covers where he's in all these different places and he's doing all these different things it creates this kind of you know the tin tin mythos 
Right. It's the world building. building without it's world building. To... Exactly. And so, you know, it doesn't matter that in the story, he'll never encounter hydras like this. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, I'll just go ahead and make these a little bit lighter just for composition's sake or just for entertainment's sake for the moment. Um, right. It won't, it doesn't matter that um, um, he's, he maybe he'll never encounter these hydras because it, it brings up a world where in your mind you feel like he could and you feel like you've seen him do it before and it's like you like like you're inventing a universe where that could happen you know yeah of course he's fought hydra come on but yeah. since this moment doesn't canonically exist can we make up a story about it like maybe they're his friends afterward oh, like he's got a pet hydra that's i really like that idea um <laughs> well because somebody some people had mentioned when i did this on stream the other day well, what if you know he's looking for hydra eggs or he stumbled oh. on i you know the he stumbled on the eggs of this thing and it's actually just mm. protective, protective um that's a good one that's a good one right that's a that's a good one um and so that's kind of one direction we could take it um but it's just an idea absolutely and that's the the fun part of like not having to think of like how does this fit into the story and all that stuff like it kind of just leaves it more Lucy goosey organic, which sometimes you need that for story building too. Totally, exactly. I mean, I'm certain, you know, in trying to think of it like a cool, like a like a cool scene in a movie or something, oftentimes people people are just like, well, what do I want to see? And then we'll build a story around that. <laughs> we'll make you know? it work. That's we'll inception, it work. right? It's all dreamscape. So <laughs> I mm -hmm. just want to see a folding city. <laughs> I really feel like Christopher Nolan thought of that idea, of that visual, and was like, I will make a movie where I can make a folding city. Mm. Although very disappointed, they never folded the city again after that. I know, right? Folded into origami. Come on, guys, do it. I know. Like this, <laughs> they give one scene where like this this character can hypothetically do that, and then you never let her have that superpower again. You know, we're done with that. We got the trailer image, so <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> love that movie though. Um, by the way, Fairy says, do you use golden ratio composition now? That's a great question. And yes, I think you probably noticed me using um, using this overlay um, right here. Um, and I guess I guess this is a little dark, so I'll just pull this back. Um, I use it, I have been known to use it um, a lot uh, before in certain compositions. I do find it can be very effective. Um, you don't have to be too exact with it, but I find that it can do some really cool things and at least at the very least, it can structure your work mm. in, a, in an interesting way. Again, this is kind of like that idea of of going looking elsewhere for inspiration. Um, I think that uh, you know, um, cleaving oneself to the the idea of something like the golden ratio can almost limit you in a particular way that could be very exciting. Um, and so, I saw like a like an article um, the other day that was like basically just basically saying like the golden ratio is meaningless and and it's just like a thing people made up and things don't necessarily look better in golden ratio at all and these and it was like this long list of reasons why and i respected it i respected that and i was like you know what maybe they're right because like i cannot definitively say whether or not things are better with golden ratio mm -hmm. i know that like that's supposed to be the idea or at least it was since like ancient greek times but i also I also just want to believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, want to believe a poster with just the golden ratio instead I, of a UFO. Yeah, instead of aliens, it's like, I just, I want to believe in the golden ratio. Because I think yes. that like, I love that idea that like, like there's a secret ratio that if you use it in art, it will unlock the mysteries of art and imagination and composition and, you know, um, and this is, that's just a really appealing idea. So who mm -hmm. knows? If it's real, I think it's real. I think there's something to it. Um, but overall, I just thought it was cool. And when I learned, when I was looking at my composition for a while, and I realized that my main character was there, kind of like in this corner, mm -hmm. um, I was like, well, let's just overlay. And I did this actually half hour before the stream started. I just grabbed this image off the <laughs> slapped oh, it on look. there, Spiral. just to see. Like I was like, just to see. Like, will this work? You know, like like and and if it and if so. Are there certain areas where I can bend the composition to that? Absolutely. Um, and so I changed his placement a little bit based on where the where the placement was. And I, you know, there's some lines like in here that I kind of like just bent a mm -hmm. body to kind of just conform a little bit to that shape. And I don't know if it's really 
matters, but I think it's really sweet. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's fun to do whenever you can. Cause it's like, not every composition is going to like work with it. Uh, and who knows whether it's real or not. I mean, it, I think in general, it's a pleasing composition because it's it, to me it's the off symmetry you know where it's not mm. completely centered and if it can do anything to make your composition a little bit stronger even if it's just the slightest bit like worth it worth it just to see i think so and then, you know for instance right now i i'm just kind of on a whim i'm i'm changing this up i'm going to liquefy this into position where i want i kind of want to line up the whiskers of this guy with the um the line mm. just because like why not like could be cool you know like exactly it just and it just makes the composition hue a little bit more closely to that um to that to that line um right and, and maybe so. that's like the challenge for this piece is like make it a golden ratio one and maybe that's like your trick from now on because it turned out so well but that's the thing is like you don't have to be beholden to anything so you choose you choose what you want to <laughs> follow and not follow absolutely uh, by the way we have about a half hour left uh Ooh. of our stream and we will be back tomorrow you guys so worry not <laughs> uh and i can't wait to see how this is going to turn out it's just so beautiful already and i feel like you're giving away such golden tips so if you guys want to follow uh jonah on behance he also streams here so uh if you follow then you will automatically get notified whenever he starts a stream oh yeah yeah, I would love to have, uh, you know, every everyone out there, you know, please stop by whenever I'm online. I would love to see you. Uh, if you're on social media, you know, please say hello there. Um, and um, yeah, it's a pleasure. I love connecting with people for sure. Definitely. Um, uh, Alex, by the way, has a question. Um, Alex says, I noticed you're drawing using a mix of dark gray as the background and light gray for the creatures. Is there a reason for that versus using a white canvas and jumping in with lots of color? Um, yes, um, I well for the moment these color these these values are ra rather temporary, um, but um, so you know they might they, once they're in I'm going to probably do a lot of adjustment and I'm going to use these masks as masks to kind of like start layering in colors and being able to treat them as different elements. Oh, so, so you imagine it as a colored piece? Sorry, you're imagining it as a colored piece? Yes, yeah. So tomorrow. The first color. Tomorrow we're gonna like you know we have like thirty minutes left now so I'll spend this time finessing the canvas getting it right etc and then tomorrow I really want us to jump into color, um, nice. but I think um, the way that I you know um, again I feel like this is a realm Anna where you uh, are just like mo beta in, in, in no. like a huge way <laughs> like where it comes down to like um, color and and um, balancing color and employing color in your pieces because your work is very colorful. And I have had a harder time um, figuring out the tackling value and color in my compositions because also in a lot of my work I depend a lot on, on like dramatic like lighting um, mm -hmm, yeah. to kind of like add drama to a scene, etc. And trying to balance both of these things, the like value and color, um, in a composition is really hard for me. And so um, a, a really easy step up is to start a composition with values because ultimately. Um, values will determine how well, it determine a lot of power, a lot of power in, a, in an image. Um, because if, if value can really pull the eye in interesting ways, you know, so for instance, um, I will, you know, as soon as these hydras are done, I'll be adding color for, you know, quiet. And he's going to be something like, you know, like, like this, you know, like, like this. Mm, um, yeah. And then you have basically, then you'll have like the flames, um, and with, with, with some colored smoke, et cetera. And they'll be, you know, this is even a middle gray. They'll be even like, almost like white, et cetera. And you almost wouldn't need it to be color because you can already tell like kind of what the, what the interesting kind of thing is yeah. in this piece. The information's there. The information is there. And so um, I find it incredibly helpful to start off in, in, in um, grayscale and then make the transition over to color. And that will be something we will do today. And I hope actually, I hope to do that by the end of today um, to at least lay in the very, very, very first steps um, of how I would transition from color to, um, to um, from value to color. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. 
Absolutely. And I love having that breakdown because, I mean, you say that <laughs> value and color is hard for me or whatever. And it's like, well, everyone, cross out me, put everyone. <laughs> true. Yeah, exactly. I guess yeah, that's true. It's constantly like, I mean, I had a really big struggle. I used to do much more painterly work and um, going from value to color to me was always like a, well, how? And like, how do I make it less tedious? <laughs> Yeah. It's like if you do it methodically and go through and like replace the values with colors and you're trying to like make it still match that value and all that stuff, it can get very grindy sometimes. Right. Um, depending on your mindset. Some people love that, like the methodical approach. Uh, and I've seen some different ways of doing it. I think it was um, John Foster who used selective color. Have you ever tried that? No. What is that? It's a it's a I think it's an adjustment layer the technical name i'm always bad at like getting the technical name for photoshop things but um selective color is just one of them where you can go into the highlights the mid-tones and the darks and change them into colors on oh. the different like boards of you know magenta to cyan or all that stuff um so yes. it's an interesting way to approach it. That's how he started going from value to color by literally changing the values into colors. It's like a, technically it stays the same value, but it gets color. Uh, um, yeah, I actually, I actually will do something very similar. Um, oh, interesting. Uh, actually, yeah. Wait, sorry, continue. Tomorrow we will find out how. <laughs> mm -hmm. But anyways, yeah, that's just uh, my thing. I usually do a really small, now my fix for it is just a really small value thumbnail because I always need value. Same, it's just like, it's so foundational and you have to have it. Mm -hmm. um, and then a bigger color. But through that, sometimes you lose the values. So it's like, it's a give and a take of what you think is best. And I'm by no means done with that journey. <laughs> So. Yeah, it's about to be like, so yeah, so how do you make it not grindy? <laughs> so like, <laughs> what did you learn? Can you please share it? Grind it out. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have no idea. I think it's really individual to the artist. Like what you find taxing and not taxing is very different. So yeah, yeah. I find, um, I think one of my followers, uh, Serial, they were saying how basically they love to do like outlining Mm -hmm. you know, the, the stage where you kind of go through and just outline all your different characters and all that stuff. Um, and I just so, find it so tedious and it's, but you know, sometimes these things kind of like you, they can kind of like just tickle you in like the ways in which in, 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 in your own like personal ways. And like, sometimes like there's a stage in, um, in um, game, in game design and, and character design for games called UV mapping. And it's just like, the, yeah. the most boring <laughs> stage ever but if you kind of let yourself it can actually be incredibly relaxing um because you can kind of turn your brain off um so it's yeah the pomegranate it does, seeds <laughs> it's 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 kind of like that it's the pomegranate seed thing i did mm. a terrible job there um no no so positive self-talk you did a great job you're gonna do I did a great job next time yes i did a great job if this was a different illustration <laughs> if only darn it <laughs> all right i'll just do it yeah oh by the way uh me too, me too says uh hello anna hello jonah and quiet i love the shout out to quiet uh i'm quite late but happy to catch you live oh so sweet <laughs> thanks for coming yeah thank you for being here i love i just love i just love people hanging out it's just fun yeah, absolutely. I know it's such a fun environment. I imagine we're all in the same room. Like we have this open studio setting. Oh, it'd be so cool. Um, yeah, totally. Anna, how often um, do you stream on, on Behance these days? Uh, these days, I've been a little tumultuous in the last few weeks. I used to do every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, four to six. But mm. uh, the last few weeks I've been, I have client work too. So <laughs> yeah. it's every once in a while, it gets a little perturbed. But uh, usually it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I will be streaming tonight. It's a thing. All right, guys, don't miss that. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I, what about um, you? Yeah. I'm, I, I kind of, it's a little haphazard for me as well. And I've been traveling recently. Ooh. Um, I did, um, I did, um, I went to like Vermont with uh, my, with my family oh, and, no uh, way. and, and one, or, one or two friends, we all got tested and then we all got a house for two weeks and um, it was really, really wonderful, but it meant that I just was kind of thrown off my game a little bit and just mm. had to, you know, stream on the iPad um, and it's just not quite my, um, you know, I just got this iPad. It's all very new. So um 
Are you using Fresco? No, I haven't used Fresco yet. People keep talking about it. <gasps> God, do it. It's so fun. Yeah. I will. I will do it. I will do it because I actually think that like I need, I need, if I'm going to work on, on, on iPad, it's actually a very pleasant experience drawing on the iPad, but streaming mm -hmm. on it, things get a little tight on the screen. Okay. And I think, I think if I was having more like, if I was uh, like, cause you're right. I think people have been describing Fresco. The word I've gotten most of out of all, uh, out of everyone's, everyone's word is fun. Like yeah. it's fun. <laughs> I want it that. really is. It feels like finger painting sometimes where it, it in a way that's the fun part, not the like messy or <laughs> <laughs> like it's obviously uh full control of the Apple pencil and all that stuff, but it brings back this, like, I don't know, like a childlike feeling of having a different medium almost. I love it. <laughs> I love that. No, that sounds awesome. That sounds really fun. Uh, by we by the way, we've got Sid Weiler in the chat saying, "OMG, no, Jonah, you UV mapping is the best." <laughs> Sid, Sid, <laughs> hello. Um, yeah, see, exactly, hello. exactly. And and listen, who am I to yuck Sid's yum? You know, like it's, it's all so individual. It's also individual, exactly. It's it's pomegranate seeds. <laughs> it's pomegranate. It's all pomegranate seeds, guys. <laughs> I love how many like yeah little analogies we've come up with over just a two hour stream. This is good. This is good. It's fun. Um, <laughs> it's it's really fun. Wait, what am I doing here? What's going on here? Did you? I don't know. Oh no! Did you lose a hydra? No, I didn't. I I, I was. <laughs> it's I loose. Just tried to duplicate a um a liquify command. And, and I, I, I oh, gotcha. Now, yeah. also, by the way, personal question here. Yeah. Uh, liquify tool. Yeah. This is integral to your work? Yes. Interesting. Okay. Yes. I was at a table one time with a bunch of illustrators at a convention and they said half the table, it was completely divided. Half the table said, get rid of the liquify tool. Who uses it? The other side said, we need the liquify tool. I use it every day. Oh. So <laughs> I'm fascinated by that. Like how different people's approaches are to the liquify tool. I'm Yes. I am so... Um... I'm so in love with the liquify tool because it, it just, it, 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 it lets me, I like kind of working like quick and dirty kind of, um, mm, totally. And I just, I find it really allows me to be, um, um, it allows me to work loose and make mistakes and then adjust them mm. and move things around, um, really, really loosely. Um, especially when it comes to like finessing certain layers, I'm definitely the kind of person who gets really caught up in kind of getting all these lines to kind of go in the right direction, et cetera. And um, being able to adjust things on the fly is just so valuable mm -hmm. um, for me, for my workflow. Do you, do you use them? I don't, but I am definitely a chaotic Photoshop user. Uh, <laughs> like okay. I, keep things in layers for clients. Usually other than that, I faint, I paint flat. Like I just go one layer and, add as I see fit, but, um, mm. yeah, I'm not organized enough to use the liquify tool personally. I feel <laughs> that's so funny that you think it's like an organization thing. I'm like, Oof. I feel like, well, it's like, it's, it's changing your sketch just that little bit. And if I change my sketch, I'm just going to paint it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I just, eh, over that, that makes sense. <laughs> I think, I think for me, I think a lot of, because a lot of what I do is I try to go for realism, et cetera. And I do a lot of like character work. And so I'm doing a lot of, um, um, I'm doing a lot of, um, um, sorry. Um, I'm, I'm doing a lot of like limbs in perspective or like poses and I'm trying to like maximize, like kind of really just like get everything right. I think, right. so I think I get yeah. like really, I get really like into, um, you know, making sure that everything is lining up just right and, and, mm. and all that. And so I think maybe, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure why. It's just I need it. <laughs> no, that makes sense day. to me. Yeah, it's it's whatever <laughs> approach comes naturally to you. I think is the right one. And I mean, I yeah, I guess I equate it with a little bit of organization, but there's no real need for that because everybody uses it in their own way. They could be doing it to like liquefy it into a chaotic, <laughs> I don't know, way of mm -hmm. putting it down. Uh, but there are so many different tools and so many different ways to use them. And that's why I'm kind of fascinated by people's approaches for it. It's just so different. Uh, that's it's so different. Yeah. Uh, well, and you've worked on video games, which is a pipeline, which means you have to send files to other people. So I'm sure you've, through that process, become 
even just the littlest bit more organized <laughs> with things than I would be at least. I think, I think it helps. I think it helps like, because I think that when you're in a production pipeline and suddenly like other people depend on you to get something done in a certain way, I think it definitely like, you know, uh, you, you can relate to being a perfectionist, I know. And so it's like having the option removed from you to like just wiggle away at something until it's done mm -hmm. um, can be really good even if it feels really bad, <laughs> um, it could just be really good for like forcing you to like, um, you know, to, to, to kind of finish something or, 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 or basically say good, you know, good, good enough. enough. Yeah. Good. It's one thing my mentor would always say is like, it's done never, or wait, no, it was do it's never done. So you have to turn it in, mm. but it's never necessarily like you're done with it. <laughs> That's a good mentor right there. That's oh, a good, my gosh, good yeah. advice. So many little pearls of wisdom. <laughs> All right. So we've got about nine minutes left before we're going to cut out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're putting in quiet right now, which I'm super excited for because, you know, main character juiciness. Ooh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, he's can, the bright boy. We can... Um... You know what, I'll, I'll, with the understanding that this is going to be very super flawed and all that, why don't I um, <laughs> just like kind of walk through kind of what we would do here? Um, well, we'll be back again tomorrow as well. Yeah, so. definitely, definitely. Yeah. But, I, but I'm, but um, tomorrow I want to, you know, I want to get. Listen, it, you know, it, I'm, I, I would like this to be due tomorrow if not done, <laughs> mm. and so. Um, <laughs> I would like to get far enough along and, you know, and I'll probably do maybe like a half hour's worth of work after the stream um, because I want you guys to kind of see um, a bit more of the full range of things, but, but I'll just totally. go through really quickly and just show, I use um, gradient maps. Um, and that's, so I've never used selective color, which I now I'm going to Anna. Ooh, um, <laughs> and so, but I, um, for anyone who's not familiar with the gradient map, it does basically what you were describing, which is it, it assigns uh, a color, to a value. So right. here we are on the dark end of things. Um, and I'm, and I can assign this kind of like dark blue to the, the dark end of things. And then I can assign, um, you know, our flame color to the light end of things. Yeah. Very close to selective color. I feel like that kind totally. of effect. Totally. Yeah, exactly. When, when, when you were describing it, I was like, Oh, that sounds like, I think I know what that's about. Um, <laughs> And so this can allow me um, some space to experiment with color and start to layer it in. And, and usually I, I treat this as much more of like a, um, um, it's just a beginning, you know, it's mm -hmm. just like how I started off. Um, but I can, and right now it's it's not on a, on a normal layer. So if I go to normal, if I go to color rather, it will shift the colors um, and not the overall value like this. Mm -hmm. um, and so as you can see, you know, as I'm layering in colors, Suddenly, these values—if it doesn't—it doesn't feel bright. I'm kind of lock, lacking some of that drama that we kind of had talked drama. about. But Got we're gonna—but we're gonna get there, is, and 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 we're gonna basically start layering in large gradients and that kind of thing. Um, so, like for instance, another thing I will do is, you know, add a clipping mask to one of these hydras, and I can go in and add a dark color um, like Ooh, this, yeah. and just kind of get that like that zoom in, you know? Yeah. That, Knock it back at the edges. Knock it back at the edges and just have it kind of like come in like that. And so I still have control over the whole thing, but it just helps a lot, um, you know, in, in kind of this like defining focus and getting things. For sure. Yeah. And then all of that like layer uh, selection and everything comes into play because you don't have to worry about edges now. It's all just coloring in. Exactly. And I need to do that for myself because I'm very bad <laughs> at, at, with with like layers and like and collapsing layers i don't like to have a, like a file i'm um, like i think somebody had like a like a, a meme or something online that only artist nerds would get but they're like there's two kinds of artists there's like the the, the i work on one layer artist and there's a work on i work on 237 layers <laughs> depends and on the time of day <laughs> it depends on the time of day. <laughs> and so i i do i i tend to be the one layer artist and i tend to pay for it a lot but i also yeah. just like really don't like having all these different layers. Um, and so um, I'm trying to keep it, I'm trying to maintain some kind of sense of organization now because otherwise I know I would just make this into a nightmare for myself. Right. I'm always coiling, coiling um, 
uh, uh, little characters. It's so. a gift and a curse to have layers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, getting on the wrong layer. Nothing worse. Mm -hmm. um, oh my but, God. And realizing that you've been doing that for a while is. Oh, just... it's, yeah. 20 minutes in, you're like, no. Yeah. This is the streak. <laughs> um, by the way, Mia says, I like how Jonah has his workspace set up on, in Photoshop. So oh. you've got a fan of just even that. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. I think it's just like the almost, it's almost like the, the basic, I think. Um, I haven't. I'm not very adventuresome when it comes to my layouts. <laughs> but, um, so anyway, so th anyway, so this is kind of how I would do it. And then I would basically, you know, I would, and then ultimately what we'll do, um, and we'll do it tomorrow, especially is we'll go in there and we'll, you know, we'll give them, um, the, the glowing eyes, uh, oh, you know, yeah. on all of these on the same layer. Um, oh yeah, you know, of course. Like that. And so, we, and then we're going to, um, make the background, um, uh, give it, its own kind of um, gradient treatment as well. And then we're gonna, you know, actually then we'll, then we'll convert to like full color um, where I'll be painting just solid on, on the canvas um, color. And so, um, you know, I can, I can just add a darkness around the outside and, you know, it just a, like an, an enhanced vignette effect. Um, wow. we're, pulling, we're pulling the eyes um, in. You can instantly see where all that prep pays off so quickly because you can just lay stuff in so fast. <laughs> it's so, and this is why I have to be, this is this is like a great reminder to me to be patient, to be like, okay, like the people who love to plan things out and outline all the things, like they really are onto something very important. And like, you really got to pay attention, Jonah, because- <laughs> Jonah, Jonah, pay attention. Jonah, Jonah. <laughs> this is your uh, studio. You're just talking to yourself the whole time. I mean, I, oh yeah, yeah. Once we, once, once we, yeah. Maybe I'll, maybe, like I'll, maybe I'll, maybe upside down. Or, yeah, like how do, how do I draw upside down again? How does that work? Uh, have you seen Stranger Things? Yes. Yeah, like out of the dark. <laughs> Hydra heads. Yes, I love that. Yikes. I love that. That actually, you, you reminds me of one particular frame from Quiet that nobody's seen yet, <gasps> which, is, which is this one. Yes. Um, where he oh, goes that's out, so cool. He goes out onto a what's called, what's called Mirror Lake, and he waits for the for the um, water to become perfectly still, and then he cuts open like a piece, like a, like a, like a, he cuts out like a like a little mirror. Yeah, but then there's like a uh, Legend of Zelda. There's a link that like Dark Link. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I'm so yeah. into it. I love it. Thank Yay. you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. So I know that we're we're almost out of time now, but I, but this is. But this is, this is the direction I'm going, to, I'm going to be taking this tomorrow. And as you can see, all that work we put into the outlining, et cetera, it, tomorrow, tomorrow, you guys, it, things are going to start coming together in some really exciting ways. Yes. I'm already just like, well, it's done. <laughs> it always is crazy how fast that can come together if you just have the right, like, you know what you're doing, obviously. So it's just boom, 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 done. <laughs> it, is, it is very gratifying when it, when it happens, when it happens. <laughs> when it happens yeah yes. i mean and, and and again it's like planning planning goes a long way you know and and i don't plan nearly enough and so i'm um <laughs> looks like you I'm, planned it this time this time yeah um oh this is oh i see it's color okay got it um yeah so so we'll um and we'll hopefully be back I'll, tomorrow with more we'll come back tomorrow with more and i will do some more planning yes all the planning are you gonna stream the in-between or are you gonna do that privately if i you know what i probably will stream it because i actually have this new um setup that you helped me with oh woo! Um, this, this dslr <laughs> camera is, is recording me it's i'm like well i'm like ooh, i'm, I'm all hd um oh, and so it. i want to maybe mess around with that so yeah again if anybody wants to um uh, come and join me at some point uh, if i do that um today i will send that send out the call um, you guys can join me and we can do that together. Um, yeah. Follow Jonah. Yeah. That's the call. And I guess, <laughs> and I, and I, guess I, was, I was told I should, I should just do a couple of shout outs of, of things that I've, places you can find me. So you can yes. find me on Twitter. I'm on Twitter. Um, you can find me on Instagram. Um, and I respond to messages on Instagram. So you can, <gasps> you can look at my stuffs um, and you can follow, follow me and say hello. Um, I'm on ArtStation for those who are on ArtStation. Um, and I have just started recently, uh, started a YouTube channel. 
Um, Run away. And I just released a video two days ago uh, called Three Creative Artistic Exercises for the Quarantine. And so some people I know at the beginning of the stream had mentioned, you know, like if you're not feeling um, motivated or whatever, you know, um, or you want to you want to work on your art, but you don't know what it is that you want to do. Um, I came up with some some games and some kind of exercises that I think do they go a long way towards making me um, more motivated when I'm not. Um, and I think they could help help some of you guys as well if you're feeling it as well, because I think that it's a really hard. This is a really hard time for a lot of people. Um, mentally you know and it's, and it's hard to maintain that kind of discipline and I, so i think that it's really important to do what we can to reconnect with our sense of fun and make art challenging while also very low pressure and so um for anyone out there who's interested um you can find me just google jonah Loeb youtube and uh, i just released a video and i i think you could uh, uh you, you might really enjoy it and yeah. um and and, and, the, and it's i'll be releasing a much more um soon so yeah awesome with that said we will see you guys tomorrow thank you so much for joining us bye bye see you tomorrow